Hello, my name is Howard Lake from UK Fundraising, and today I'm delighted to be speaking to Leanne McGrory, who is Country Manager at Salesforce.org. Hi, Leanne, how are you? Howard, I'm great, thank you. How are you? Doing good. Very well, thank you. Yes. Um, tell us more about what, what you do. What does Country Manager at Salesforce.org do? Ah, well, um, thanks for asking, Howard. So um, I work as part of the Salesforce.org team, which for anyone that's not familiar with Salesforce.org is the business unit within Salesforce.com that focuses on supporting um, the nonprofit sector. So as you would expect, charities, nonprofits, educational institutions and uh, philanthropic organisations. So uh, in my team, we look after um, existing customers and potential customers um, that want to join the Salesforce.org family. Um, today, we have about two and a half thousand nonprofits across the UK and Ireland who uh, use Salesforce technology. And so my teams look after those uh, potential new relationships and existing relationships, helping those nonprofits get the most from Salesforce technology and the Salesforce relationship. Um, so today we're going to hear about exactly what what a non-profit CRM is. Um, I know when I first started in fundraising, uh, I think I called it a fundraising database. That was a long time ago. Um, I know things have uh, improved substantially since then. So yes, nowadays, what how would you how does Salesforce describe a, a non-profit CRM? Yeah, like you, Howard, I would I would say the same. You know, I've worked in non-profit technology for for seventeen years, um, and for a lot of that time, we talked about fundraising databases that would help nonprofits accelerate you know the, the way that they fundraise the the diversity of income and i do think that that over time or in recent years at least uh, that that idea is changing that fundraising is still a really pivotal and crucial part of an organization's um you know business but when you combine that with all of the other capabilities that you need um, to serve other parts of the charity, a, a CRM really becomes more important about bringing together all of your staff um, and, and operating in one place. And I think it's also this idea that that you know the non nonprofit sector has been sort of chasing and striving towards for a long time of the 360 degree view of a supporter. So it's amazing if you've been able to invest in a fundraising CRM. The next evolution of that then is well, how do we make sure that we have volunteers, membership, grants, um, service delivery, case management, grant management. Is there a way to bring all of that into one place? And so that's the, the Salesforce uh, view, the Salesforce world. That's what we are striving to provide is that idea of putting your supporter or your constituent at the centre of everything that you do. Yeah. And that becomes even more important because of external drivers, digital first, cloud first, multi-channel, omni-channel, um, AI as well. Um, so does, does Salesforce also um, provide some of these sort of commercial level tools to, to charities, AI, machine learning? Yeah, all of that. And, and, I, and I hope that anyone that's come across Salesforce before or heard of Salesforce, um, you know, has that, that idea that Salesforce is a really large technology platform, a big technology company. So Salesforce.com, number one CRM company in the world for seven years running from the IDC. Um, number one CRM, uh, sorry, marketing tool, um, also for five years running. So really, we we view our, our solution as best in class technology. But the really cool thing is what we've done at Salesforce.org is we've taken that amazing technology and we've built the nonprofit cloud. And what it does is it takes that common data model, it takes that um, that innovation with AI and uh, machine learning and all that really cool stuff, and we've built the nonprofit cloud, which if you can imagine is using that technology but building best-in-class non-profit specific functionality for charities and educational institutions so really that's what we've tried to do is take what we know organizations need in the non-profit sector but take the best of that um that innovation and that we get from salesforce and create a really specific functional package that suits the needs of um you know all all non-profits all charities and that includes um, impact measurement, because I know that was always one of the big challenges to actually match income generated from particular people or organisations and the actual um, project in the field or wherever it was. Um, is how, how does that appear in, in Salesforce? Yeah, again, I think that's a topic that's been discussed in the sector for, for a number of years now, ultimately looking at how do you measure impact, measure outcomes, uh, you know, the um, the I guess the proliferation and the, and the focus on the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and how nonprofits align to those becomes another important piece. Yeah. And, and again, if you have um, fundraising, program management, grant management in the same place, 
that impact measurement, outcome measurement becomes so much easier because you can see all of those dynamics. And even, you know, even for some organizations, they can have the partners and nonprofits that deliver their programs using that same set of technology. So that you're not just managing, measuring your outcomes, that the overall impact of the community, including the partners that you fund. So it can be really basic from um, improving literacy and um, you know with with young children through to bigger um, programs so it becomes really important and I think back to the idea of fundraising Howard it's that sort of continuous um, circle of funding if you show those outcomes does that help potentially with your funding sources and how has Salesforce and its clients reacted um, it, it, given COVID uh, the impact of COVID over the past year presumably that's driven use and creative use of, of the technologies at great speed yeah, I mean, uh, COVID and the pandemic has been, you know, one of the worst things of, of our time, hasn't it? It's um, it's just made so much change in so many different ways. And, and it's been really, I think, upsetting for us all to see the impact it's had on the sector, you know, from the change in income to change in staff, all of that sort of stuff. But what it has done in some cases is it's really driven innovation. Um, and so, you know, in different ways, you know, we have organisations that would say, you know, they're their services, um, Age UK being a great example, service, the demand for services went triple overnight and they had to deal with a lot of more influx of calls and the need, referrals as well, and the need to look after um, you know, um, people in the community that would need help. And so we implemented things like chatbots. So if people were trying to get in touch, was there a way to help automate that information to streamline the calls? So I think it really has, um, the, the, um, the change in need has driven some innovation, but also the, the lack of capability a lot of times has also been a big driver for innovation. Working from home on a, on a constant basis or a regular basis has changed people's needs and how they access data and how they can get information into their systems. So yeah, I think a terrible um, event in a lot of ways, but it has helped, I think, in some ways with innovation. I think in the nonprofit sector, organizations are really, um, restricted in their ability to invest in technology uh, for, for many reasons you know the focus on the on the, the pound and, and lack, lack of resources and uh, you know what we're trying to do is look for opportunities or examples of how could you be innovative in just small ways like the chatbots i just mentioned it doesn't have to be a two-year program of change across crm it can be just be small bits and pieces here and there Okay, uh, we're going to have a quick look at how Oxfam has used uh, Salesforce's nonprofit cloud. Um, so here is Nicola Tallett from Oxfam talking at last month's Dreamforce. Uh, I'm Nicola Tallett. I'm the Director of Engagement at Oxfam Great Britain. Way back when we started this journey, Oxfam was looking at a problem of um, really a database that held our business back rather than a CRM system that enabled, enabled and empowered our business. So in that context, we were looking um, for so many problems to solve and started um, with Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, and then we added the Marketing Cloud to it. And our primary objectives in pulling those together has been to look at twofold. Firstly, the supporter experience. So our strategy is to bring our supporter to the heart of all of our marketing and all of our fundraising and to ensure we think about supporter first. And the second one, not only giving our supporters an excellent experience, was all about our staff and our internal processes being a better experience and, and technology that they could use and, uh, and be empowered by. So by bringing the sales cloud and the service cloud in, we know that we've got our data in a space that we can use it. We know that um, we're recording, reporting and managing the interactions with our supporters better. So we have better information, um, better accessibility and for, uh, of that information. And for our staff, that means that they can get access to the information that's relevant to them, not every piece of information that we've ever held about anyone at any time. So we can tailor the information, we can tailor their reporting and their lives have become easier and information more accessible. And by adding in the marketing cloud, we've now got outbound marketing and inbound marketing all coming together 
in real time and that in real time has been so important to us uh, to be able to have information that's um, timely reporting that's timely so that was nicola tallett from oxfam um salesforce is quite often associated with some of the bigger charities i know you can work at that level of sophistication is salesforce used by many smaller or medium-sized charities yeah, uh, well, it is, Howard. I mean, we're we're so, so fortunate to count some amazing names as Salesforce customers, uh, you know, from UNICEF, Oxfam, um, NCS Trust, uh, RSPCA, so some amazing household names. And I, and I think you're right, um, you know, a lot of the times what I hear or I see on, on social is Salesforce is great for big charities, but does it really resonate with the smaller charities? And I, I would say that it, it does. Um, you know, one of the... the one of the bits of Salesforce that I'm sort of most proud of is this idea that um, Salesforce gives back. And so when Salesforce was first set up, there was this the 111 one, one model. Yeah. So 1% of technology given to the nonprofit sector. That means that any registered charity in the world can have 10 free licenses of Salesforce technology for free. And of that 2,500 charities in the UK and Ireland I mentioned, two thirds of those um, are free 10 license uh, packages. So we think that's a great way to give back into the sector. And, and really it's our job to help organizations, whether they use 10 licenses or another piece of, of the technology to get the most out of, out of that. Um, and that can be, you know, right down to very small startup nonprofits that can just get running on Salesforce for free and um, teach themselves through our trailhead on online free learning, use the power of us hub, which is an online community of nonprofits, uh, and use a lot of our self-service resources. Now, what we want to do is help those organizations grow over time and potentially look at other ways we can help. But it's great to have that the community is thriving. You know, there's just um, hundreds of people every day talking about best practice um, and, and outcomes and innovation. So where can charities, large and small, go and find out more about what, what do you offer? Um, well, the quick, the quick Google search is just salesforce.org um, or you can go to salesforce.com and find the nonprofit industry. Um, there's an, a really amazing page that gives you access to all of those resources that I just mentioned and more. Um, so if you just do a quick Google search for um, Salesforce Power of Us, Power of Us is the, um, we call it the P10, the Power of 10. That's the P10 program. And whether you're an organization that, that you know raises 50 million or nothing, um, there really is um, a set of solutions that, that will, will suit you. So I'd say come and have a chat with us. You know, we have lots of people here that are dedicated to the nonprofit sector. Uh, we have lots of use cases on our website and around our partner community um, of various types of ways we can help. You know, and that again is from um, delivering programs, managing cases about individuals, um, you know, grant applications. Um, there are so many different ways, more than just CRM. So yeah, I'd say the sites that you just mentioned, Howard, and all, but also look for Salesforce Power of Us, which has lots of resources you can read through before you even have to come and say hello to us. Marvellous. I'll include a link in that under the in, on YouTube underneath this, doc, this ah, video. Marvellous. Leon McGrory um, at salesforce.org. Thank you very much indeed. Great to talk to you, Howard. Thanks. Take care.